Welcome back everyone, this is going to be my video for the new Marvel Wolverine trailer. A lot of you asked me to do a video for this, so I'll explain what's going on. There's a couple really big Easter eggs, but it looks like we have another shut up and take my money situation. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're going to start seeing more mutants and X-Men characters showing up in Marvel Phase 4 movies and Disney Plus series. They're sort of creating the circumstances that are necessary to introduce mutants into the MCU right now. In fact, Billy and Tommy from WandaVision are technically the first brand new mutants inside the MCU since the start of Marvel Phase 4, even though Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were kind of mutants in the MCU before this. But there are a couple big Easter eggs in this that you probably spotted. Some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. So obviously there's the Quebec license plate that reads HLK181, which is an Easter egg for Incredible Hulk number 181, the first major fight between Wolverine and Hulk. It wasn't his first appearance. It was just the first time they actually fought each other in the first time Wolverine was on the cover of a comic book. There's also the princess bar on the chalkboard, which is a bar in Madripoor that was part of a big Wolverine story, and a tourist poster also from Madripoor to the right of this, meaning that this scene is taking place in Madripoor. A large part of the game will either be in Madripoor or the entire game will take place there. In Madripoor, obviously big MCU connection, we just saw it during the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. So the actual princess bar was first featured in Marvel Comics Presents number one back in September 1988. Madripoor itself, obviously, which we just got done watching on Falcon and Winter Soldier, Sharon Carter, the power broker, obviously a big base of operations there. During the Wolverine story, there was mostly a bunch of X-Men characters that Wolverine was fighting, like you have Patch, Tiger, the Marauders, Morlocks, Reavers. So a lot of the stickers and things that you see plastered all over the bar are Easter eggs and references to that. The song that was playing during the trailer, I had to take it out just for copyright reasons because music is heavily copyrighted on YouTube. But the trailer song was James Carr's The Dark End of the Street. And even though the actual song was just meant to be a straightforward country cheating ballad, the lyrics read, At the dark end of the street, that's where we always meet, hiding in the shadows, where we don't belong, living in darkness to hide our wrong. In the context of this Wolverine story that takes place during this, is a reference to Wolverine doing really, really awful things to even worse people under cover of darkness in this really dark place of mad rapport. Mad Report initially showed up during the X-Men comics, like I said, it's mostly been a port of call for villains. Like if you're familiar with Corto Maltese in the DC universe in the Batman comics, they've used it in a bunch of DC movies as well too. They just used it in the James Gunn Suicide Squad movie recently. It's the same idea. It's just a safe haven for all kinds of shady stuff. So in the MCU, obviously Sharon Carter became the power broker during that five year time jump after the snap after Avengers Infinity War. She built up this criminal empire. She wound up funding the new version of the Weapons Plus program to create a new version of a super soldier serum to create a bunch of super soldiers to sell off to the highest bidders around the world. Even though they didn't end Falcon and Winter Soldier on Mad Rapport, she is still the power broker. She still has her criminal empire that's centered on Mad Rapport. She's just been pardoned and welcomed back into the U.S. government. So at the end of the series, she gets on that phone call with her people that are back on Mad Rapport, her power broker people, and says that they're basically open for business. Like she has access to all this weapons and technology through the U.S. government now. And they're just going to be stealing it and selling it off to the highest bidder. Most of that I think they'll cover during Captain America 4 when we get to that movie because they just announced a new Captain America movie with Falcon's version of Captain America. Winter Soldier will come back for that and they'll probably also pay off the big Thunderbolts, Julie Louis, Dreyfus, Val stuff during that as well. Also by that time we'll probably have seen a couple other mutants pop up in the MCU, other X-Men characters. And also early theory on the new version of Wolverine inside the MCU, James Hallett would have existed for a long time, but because we have the Sharon Carter power broker stuff with her now pilfering the US government, selling off their technology to the highest bidder around the world, it would be a really cool setup for Wolverine if they had her steal weapons plus tech from Thunderbolt Ross and sell it on the DL to the Weapon X branch of the Canadian government, and then they wind up using that technology to mint the brand new MCU Wolverine meaning we would see the new version of Wolverine after Captain America 4. That would be a really badass post credit scene for that movie. The whole thing with the Incredible Hulk 181 Easter egg. So the comic book obviously is famous because it's the first full appearance of Wolverine on the cover of a comic book. But like I said, technically his actual first full appearance was at the very end of the previous issue, Incredible Hulk 180. And even though later comics would explain his backstory as James Hallett and how he was born a mutant in the 1800s and then just lived through many, many wars, eventually becoming part of the Weapon X program, getting the adamantium bonded to his skeleton, 
during this very first storyline with the Hulk when he debuted, he just debuted as the Wolverine. So the short backstory on this very first storyline is that he'd been dispatched by Department H, the part of the Canadian government that controlled all superhuman activity in Canada, like Alpha Flight, for example. So they're also loosely connected to the Weapon X program too. They dispatch him to stop the Hulk after he rampages across the Canadian border and gets into this huge battle with the villain Wendigo. Originally, Wolverine had no connection to Thunderbolt Ross or the Weapons Plus program. They kind of retconned that Weapons Plus backstory in later. But the Hulk vs. Wolverine storyline turned into one of those situations where the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So the Hulk surmised that if Wolverine was also trying to fight Wendigo and Wendigo was his enemy, then Wolverine must be a friend. But of course they spend a bunch of the issue fighting each other in the next issue as well. But what happens is at the beginning of the next issue, 182, Department H shows up and basically stops their fight, ordering Wolverine to come back. Like, you failed, stop fighting him. So the very first Hulk versus Wolverine fight kind of ended in a draw. That many, many rematches over the years, probably one of the most famous being the Old Man Logan storyline. But a really cool connection to What If, because we're in the middle of Marvel's What If episodes. There's a really cool twist on that first Hulk vs. Wolverine fight in the What If comics. So What If issue 31 was what if Wolverine had killed the Hulk and it's a retelling of their very first fight during the events of Incredible Hulk number 181. During that fight Wolverine goes rogue and decides to kill the Hulk using his adamantium claws to just rip out Hulk's throat. And even though technically his gamma power should heal him instantly, during this What If story they just say that the damage killed the Hulk. Talking about connections to Loki, the multiverse nexus points, that sort of serves as a nexus point for this version of Wolverine. He becomes an alternate universe version, goes super dark, and winds up joining Magneto's Brotherhood of Mutants instead of joining the X-Men. Most what-if stories have pretty downer endings. Then he winds up killing Magneto after he tried to kill Jean Grey, and as Magneto lay dying, bleeding out, he uses his powers of magnetism to force Wolverine to kill himself, manipulating his adamantium claws into his own throat. So it was meant to be a darkly poetic ending for this alternate universe version of Wolverine. He was dying in the same way that he had initially killed the Hulk, creating the Nexus event that caused him to go down this darker path. Oh, the irony. It's kind of like what if episode 4's ending with Dark Doctor Strange, just completely foobarring his version of the universe. Links for all my what if episode videos down in the description. I know you're all asking what's going on with Wolverine in the MCU now that Marvel has the characters back. I've already talked about how the Eternals movie, some of the other upcoming movies are slowly setting up the concept of mutants inside the MCU. But there was also a recent report that Kevin Feige had tried to get Hugh Jackman to guest star in Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness as part of the Scarlet Witch villain subplot. Wherein, at least according to rumors, Scarlet Witch will be one of the main antagonists. Not the true main villain, but during the movie, Doctor Strange will have to try and stop her from completely destroying all of reality while she's trying to find her children in the multiverse. And while she's tearing through everyone in alternate dimensions with her chaos magic powers, apparently she is supposed to fight a major Fox X-Men character because it's a big multiverse story, so you expect some other characters from other franchises, like they're doing in Spider-Man No Way Home with the Tobey Maguire characters and the Andrew Garfield characters. Like Doctor Strange is doing the same thing, only now they're doing it with Fox X-Men characters. And originally the report was that Marvel wanted to get Hugh Jackman's Wolverine to come back for this big Scarlet Witch fight, but according to reports it just didn't work out. Either he turned them down or there were scheduling issues or whatever. So Wolverine is not going to be in Doctor Strange 2, but everyone now thinks that the replacement Fox X-Men character that Scarlet Witch will fight is going to be James McAvoy's Professor X because it had to be a really powerful X-Men character. Kevin Feige said in general, talking about the new version of the X-Men movie that they're working on, they haven't had any formal conversations about recasting a new version of Wolverine yet, but that is the idea. That they'll introduce a new version of MCU Wolverine, and if we see Hugh Jackman ever come back, it would just be in a cameo scene in a big multiverse type of Avengers movie, like a Secret Wars movie. We do have the Kang multiverse war that they just started on Loki, thank you very much Sylvie. So it sounds like Marvel is slowly setting up a Secret War storyline, but we probably won't see them pay that off till way down the road after they've rebooted a new version of the solo X-Men movie in the MCU. But it does sound like they have plans to mix in some legacy Fox X-Men characters coming back, like some of the big ones, with brand new recast versions of some of the characters. Any tips on uh, getting into the MCU there, Korg? But if you spotted any of the big Easter eggs in this Wolverine trailer, just write them below in the comments. And what I'll do is when the game does come out in a couple years, it'll be like 2024, 2025, I will give away copies. I've got a couple big videos that I'm working on. My full Marvel What If Episode 6 video will also post Wednesday just like normal. So make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. 
Everyone click here for my full Shang-Chi post credit scene video and click here for that really cool Wolverine deleted scene where he gets the yellow costume. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.